The next directory is the proc, P-R-O-C. And this is another virtual directory, kind of like the dev directory. This directory will, with this virtual directory will contain information about your system. This is where you can go into this directory and, and you'll see information about your, your processes that are running your, you know, PCI bus information when you, you know, talking about PCI slots and ISA slots and, you know, just everything regarding your hardware of the, of the system is going to be contained in this virtual directory, this virtual folder. All right, the next one is the root directory, the spelled out root, R-O-O-T. This is the default home directory for the root user, and the root user is the administrator of the entire system. This is where their home directory is. It's not going to be home slash root. It will be just root, and the reason for that is just for security. If you've got all your regular users with home directories, you know, in home, home slash Joe, home slash Bob, whatever, you don't, you you know, you want to contain them within that section and not have them really see the root directory, if you will. But anyway, so the root directory is separate from the home directory. Okay, the next one is sbin. And you'll notice it sounds like bin, the first one I mentioned. And I think this stands for secure binary. But anyway, what this is, this directory is where certain applications and programs are located that require administrative level privileges. These are programs and applications and, and things that normal users wouldn't be using. A good example is FDisk. You may have heard of FDisk. That's kind of like a partitioning tool. Well, that's kind of a powerful tool, and you don't generally want your average users to be able to use FDisk. They could partition the disk and, and mess things up. So that's a administrative level uh, application that will be located in SBIN. All right. The next one is the temp directory (TMP). As you can probably guess, this is a a temporary directory or a directory where temporary information is stored. Sometimes, you know, if you're running different programs, it will temporarily save a log that will then be erased when you close down the program or you know it can just be for anything and I think most distributions are set to uh, empty the temp directory upon reboot so you wouldn't want to do anything permanent in here sometimes I'll unpack a, a piece of source code in this directory and then move it or something but you know anyway that's just a just a temporary directory all right, the next one is a very important directory, the USR directory, and that stands for Unix System Resources. A lot of people think that the USR means user, but that's not what it means. It stands for Unix System Resources. And this directory is going to have a lot of subdirectories in it, and it's got like USR slash bin, USR slash include, USR slash lib. And this generally speaking, is where shared data and shared libraries and shared binaries, meaning applications, will be located. Because Linux has a networking and a Unix root you know, background to it, a lot of times what the way things would be set up is that you would have a, you know, sort of like a server or a, you know, a, a, a um, you would have it set up where you could have thin clients or, or separate clients attaching to a server that, that will contain, that will hold all of these applications and libraries. And so the USR directory is where some of the shared data will be held. Generally, the stuff that's in the USR directory is not host specific. In other words, this is not where you would generally find data related to the specific machine that you're running. Now, there's some exceptions. There's a subdirectory in there called USR slash local, and that is where you generally will store local data. Or to put it another way, if you install an application after the fact, let's say you've got your Linux distribution up and running and, and going, and you go out and you get a separate application out there and you install it, Sometimes that will often be installed in USR slash local. And because the thinking is 
that's where you can keep all your local stuff. That's not going to be touched when you upgrade the system, you know, because your Linux distribution is not going to install anything in USR slash local. Only you would. Only the user would. So you can put stuff in there and be reasonably sure that it will stay safe. There's a lot more to the USR directory, and I've barely scratched the surface because that's there's just there's just a lot in there. But anyway, check out USR slash doc. That's where a lot of documentation is is held. That's a great directory to ch- check out. And then the last one is the var directory, and this stands for variable files or variable data. This is where a lot of things like log files are held or um, databases or websites are you know a lot of times the Apache web server is set up to um, manage its you know base file location in the var directory and this is where a lot of you know this is where the cron jobs I think are, are generally run and there's just a lot of variable information and your 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 if you run an email program email server you know the mail spool file will be in the var directory and there's a lot of stuff in the var directory that can that can you know that can be you know that can fluctuate and change and so oftentimes it's set over on a different partition and that's also something else we'll talk about but uh, that's what the var directory is for basically logs and spool files and and things like that now those are sort of the basic directories there are some additional directories that sometimes you'll find in in certain distributions oftentimes there's a boot directory this is this is located at the top level you know in the root partition you'll have you know after bin you'll have boot and that will be where the linux kernel is held the Linux kernel config and system map files. Uh, some of the bootloaders will store some of their information in the boot directory. There's also oftentimes a media root directory right off root. You know, you'll have instead of MNT, I mean, you'll have MNT, but you'll also have media. And the reason for that is the, I think the standards actually calls for MNT directory to hold your I think it's your temporary shared mounted partitions, uh, network type partitions, network type type shares, and the media directory is supposed to be where your removable media is mounted, like CD-ROMs and USB sticks and that kind of thing. Some distributions have noticed use the media directory for things like CD-ROMs and USB sticks. But it seems to me that most of them still stick those in MNT. So it just kind of depends. I think PC Linux OS still uses MNT for everything. CD-ROMs and USB sticks and, and everything. But I could be wrong about that. Oftentimes you'll see an opt directory, OPT. And I'm not sure if that stands for optional or not. But it is kind of optional because I see it in some distributions and I don't see it in others. And that's kind of like a... Well, optional, I guess, sort of a, uh, I've heard some people describe it as sort of like a, like a sandbox or a testing ground, kind of like a place where you can install applications if you want. Some distributions actually install the stuff there in Opt. I think Arch Linux is one, and there's been a couple others I've noticed that actually use Opt, and that's where they put packages that are installed. But I think, I'm not quite sure if that's what the standard is or not. I don't think it is. I think it's still USR, but anyway. The opt directory is often found in, in distributions, and when it's there, it's usually for extra or additional packages that are installed later on. In other words, you generally don't find any system critical information in opt. It will be like, let's say you upgrade Firefox. Well, it might install the new Firefox in opt. Or OpenOffice, I think, is a classic example. I think OpenOffice has always installed itself in opt. It's such a big application, they just figure, well, let's just stick it someplace else where it won't won't bother anybody else. And so I think that's that's more or less the, the, the file systems that you generally see. As I mentioned, some distributions do things a little bit differently. Some distributions will have things in different places, but more, I mean, there is a standard, and I will have a link to the, to the file system hierarchy standard that has been adopted, and I think by the Free Standards Group or somebody like that, and 
uh, check that out. There's some good reading there. 